COVID-19 tips and tricks from uh, Rachel Oliver. Okay, here goes. Just a little bit about my background. I'm uh, multifaceted and I've worked in a few different areas, from nursing to specialist military book selling. I trained as a registered nurse back in the late 70s, early 80s, and I worked in surgical operating theatres in the UK, the Middle East, in Saudi and Abu Dhabi and for the military there by the way and in Australia for many years I specialised in trauma and orthopaedics I also updated my skills and recently trained as a dental assistant in Australia I just got my teeth into that I'm no longer practising as a nurse but I do maintain direct links with the profession and until very very recently I was working in the NHS in medical administration well, it sounds like a doomsday virus, but it's just a medical code word meaning coronavirus disease 2019. It's not as posh as it sounds now, is it? Coronaviruses are a species of virus that are well known. This is a subspecies. I'd like to call this self-care and isolation or how to do it and not get it by someone who's doing it and hopefully we're not going to be getting it. What is it? Well, it's a virus. It's not a flu virus or a flu virus strain. So presently, there's no vaccines for it. Getting it will give a degree of immunity as your body develops antigens to it. What does it do? Well, like flu, it specifically attacks the respiratory system, especially the lungs, and it causes viral pneumonia. This is different to bacterial pneumococcal pneumonia, which is a vaccine for that one, but there isn't a vaccine for this particular one because it's a virus. That's the main thing that you need to know. How do I know if I've got it? Well, there's some interesting symptoms which develop. One of the interesting things is that there's no sneezing. So you get a snuffy nose, but no sneezing. Uh, you get a new dry cough. That's a cough that wasn't there previously. It's quite dry and no expectorant. That means you don't bring anything nasty up, you know, nothing horrible. Um, this lasts for about one to three days. Uh, the next thing to know is about raised temperatures. So you will suffer from um, a fever, quite a high fever, around about 38 degrees, maybe slightly above. And because of that fever, you get shivering. You might even get some rigors, but you will start to feel pretty horrible. Some headaches, occasional diarrhea, but you will be needing that half ton of uh, toilet tissues that are stored up in the loft. Tips to self-care and prevent. Well, how is it passed? It's passed by airborne. Uh, or drop it. Um, that means it's carried in the air and it lands on a surface or skin or whatever. But those surfaces get touched by people, your skin gets touched by your fingers and it gets into your systems through your mouth essentially. So it's important to regularly hand wash with just ordinary soap and water. You know, hot water, soap, bog standard stuff. If you come into contact with something or someone who's handled anything and they're suffering from this, then the quickest way to cure it is to use hand washing. Or you can burn through some DOSH and use commercial sanitizers. They're great. Both of these methods kill the virus, which can survive a couple of days on a non-porous surface so uh, it's important that you wipe down your uh, kitchen and your bathroom and places like that your banisters and your door handles and all that kind of thing don't touch your face if it's on the skin of your face it can get into your system through your eyes and your lips mouth nose anywhere where there's mucous membrane this virus loves mucous membrane once it's in it's in and then you're gonna get poorly. So the idea is to keep it out. The other way of keeping it away from you is social distancing. Uh, the same one and a half to two meters from another person. I know it's daft. Unfortunately, this is seemingly the best way to uh, prevent the airborne and droplet uh, transmission, uh, which is the most popular way that people are catching it we're going to have to change our, the ways that we socialize with people we're just going to be a little bit further apart than we normally are but um, i'm sure we'll get used to it in time and we're just going to have to stop handshaking i know it's really popular everybody likes to shake their hands with their mates don't they let's just say hello to each other and wave shall we or you know that kind of thing it's only for a short time and uh, i'm sure we won't forget how to handshake in the future but that's the thing handshaking 
easy way to transmit it from A to B, from one person to the next, because it's on your fingers and your hands, then it goes on your hands and your fingers, then you touch your face, then it's inside, and you've got it. And that's why it's important to wash down your surfaces in your house with uh, good quality disinfectant, and uh, especially the banisters, your uh, door handles, uh, lids of things like that. Disinfectants are really interesting. On the back of most disinfectants, you will actually see it says effective against coronavirus. A lot of people, conspiracy theorists, whoa, whoa, uh, they're saying, whoa, well, what's all this about? Uh, this is meant to be a new thing. Well, the coronavirus is a family of viruses. It's well known. Um, it's called a corona by the way because it looks like a crown you know the crown on the queen or the king or whatever it's well known it's so on the back of the disinfectants at the bottom it usually says effective against coronaviruses it's effective against this one as well so the best way to not get it is to self isolate that's what all the talk is in the news and everything what they're saying up to 7 to 14 days even if you're not suffering from any uh, diseases now that's for people who've got existing respiratory diseases because if you've got COPD or um, uh, asthma or another existing respiratory disease and particularly if you're over 70 years of age then you are very vulnerable to catching this virus and so people are actually going into what they're calling self-quarantine uh, 7 to 14 days self-quarantine um, I know the things are changing every day but that's what the in the news is at the moment if you're able to do that then that's a great way of not getting this particular virus okay so big question now what do you do if you get it okay first of all massive letters here don't panic okay most people who get this recover after a few days, seven days to 14 days, usually seven to 14 days. It can be anything from mild through uncomfortable to high fevers. If you're sick for more than a week or you have difficulty breathing or coping, then call triple one for advice. That's your first port of call, one, one, one. Give them a call, ask their advice, the professional people, they'll tell you what to do. They'll say where to go and what to do. Don't be calling your doctor's office, your GP every five minutes. Honestly, they are absolutely worn out with the inquiries that they're getting. So we need to leave them alone because they don't want to see you either. Uh, if you need treatment, then you're going to need to go to hospital for treatment. So try 111 first and take it from there. So if you've got it, you need to self-isolate for uh, 14 days. That doesn't mean that you have to lock yourself away in a cupboard for 14 days. You can go outside in the garden. You can dance around the flowers. You can pick the flowers. You can dig your potatoes up. You can do anything you like. It doesn't matter, right? So long as you're self-isolating, that's away from other people. You can talk to your neighbor next door. Uh, over the garden pat wall but don't be leaning over it and, and him or her leaning back and, and you're having a good chinwag uh, face to face that's not self-isolation so what you need to do is just stand back and you can have a chat and all that kind of thing uh, don't be worried by the way if the uh, neighbor's got a russian gas mask on uh, when they find out that you've got this disease if someone does a shot for you this is really important for, for um, that you know if somebody does a shot for you you need to get them to leave it on your patio. Okay, so I'll say that again. If somebody does a shop for you, it's important that they do not come near you or come into your home. It's vital because you don't want to transmit this to somebody else. Get them to leave it on your doorstep or your patio. Let them tell you when it, you, they're going, it's going to be there and when it's been left. And you can pick it up, all right? When you do that, you can wipe down the... Um, um, the uh, handrails or the uh, door knobs or the door whatever whatever's on the door you just wipe it down and um, that will eliminate anybody who comes along puts their hand on it and gets the door served whatever and um, there's got to be no physical or close contact this will stop them getting this this condition um, and um, it'll help you as well okay so just thinking about um, looking after yourself and uh, um, keeping hydrated 
and um, it's very important that you keep hydrated that's lots of water or fruit juices you know if you can't drink water then that's fine just have some fruit juices uh, as long as you get plenty of water into your system because if you've got a high temperature you sweat a lot and you lose the water out of your system really fast and you need to replenish that because you need your body to keep working all the time uh, you might not feel like eating too much um, but if you can uh, try and eat some carbs that's the fuel for your body carbohydrates you know bread and pasta and stuff like that um, and uh, and protein because you need protein to rebuild your body because um, you know when when it's been um, affected by disease it needs to rebuild again so pl plenty of proteins um, that's uh, you know beef sandwiches and spam and ham and whatever yeah soup's good uh, sandwiches anything easily digestible uh, I'll tell you what's great as well those little um, muesli bars um, they're fantastic even if you're not hungry uh, if you nibble on one of them they've got they've got sugar in the sweet and they've got uh, lots of calories in because you need the calories uh, we're not on a diet here we're wanting to get better so nip down get a few bars of them you'll be fine if you are feeling really bad if you're having difficulty breathing i've told you what to do you're in 111 if you're really worried about that but how to help yourself to breathe better don't lie horizontally in bed because it pools all right and slumping doesn't help either so if you can get two pillows into a v and then put one uh, another third pillow across the top prop yourself up switch your video on watch your films have your drinks at the side of your bed and um you know you'll be fine um you'll get over it you'll feel like rubbish but you'll feel a lot better if you actually do that because it stops that um pooling in your lungs where um you know it can help it can actually cause you some distress and keep mentally positive we don't want to go into a depressive state watch your television keep yourself informed watch films pick out a load of your favorite films let's get them on let's whack them on and let's what what let's you know i've get some weepies you know what i mean um you can read hey do you remember that we, we used to read books once and uh, write oh my god forgotten how to do that get yourself a pen and a pad of paper and write hey why not write a letter um and keep busy you know learn a new skill like knitting or um crochet crochetting or um learn a language like swahili or russian or whatever whatever takes your fancy let's do it use the time this is precious time thinking time as well we don't get a lot of that either do we Stay connected via social media to your mates, your friends, your family. And, um, you know, you, they've got connections as well. They've got social media. You've got um, the phone. You've got uh, Messenger. You've got Skype. You've got all them. I mean, I, I get a call from my friend down in uh, Worcester about three times a day. She never rings me on the phone. She always messages me on Messenger. And uh, I've been caught into pretty compromising positions uh you know in the last uh, since she's been doing that and uh, me looking the other way as well it's quite interesting some days um our hair's all over the place we don't even bother with a brush anymore but hey it's great because you know you're maintaining eye to eye contact and that's what it's all about so um bring your mates tell them you know tell them a joke or whatever and have a laugh and um uh, it's great but don't be isolated you're isolated from with the disease okay but you're not socially isolated it really means that you know you've got to maintain connections because that keeps your mental health positive it's not a sentence it's a protective isolation let's use this time positively and we'll all get through it and uh, we'll all come out better people at the other end i'm sure things change uh, quite daily for this uh, covid outbreak at the moment so please check the nhs uh, website uh, to keep up to date and for the latest information thanks for listening bye